Today is Monday, November 21st. What to know about another tragic shooting and why authorities are calling some people's actions heroic. Also, the latest on a brutal storm that hit the Northeast and what's in a new historic climate deal. Plus, will former President Trump come back to Twitter? He's now invited once again. Thanksgiving dinner is costing Americans more this year and not just because of inflation. And Team USA takes the field at the 2022 World Cup today. We'll tell you what to expect through the controversial tournament. Those stories and more next. Welcome, welcome to The Newsworthy. All the day's news in around 10 minutes. Fast, fair, fun, and on the go. I'm Erica Mandy. Thanks so much for being here. You ready? Let's do this. Well, sadly, Americans are once again mourning the loss of people killed in another mass shooting. A gunman with a semi-automatic rifle opened fire inside an LGBTQ nightclub in Colorado Springs over the weekend. Five people died and 25 more were hurt before people in the club confronted and fought off the shooter. The Colorado Springs police chief says if it wasn't for them, there would have been even more violence. The suspect is now in the hospital, and police are looking into whether the attack was a hate crime and whether the gunman acted alone. He had been arrested before, just last year, when his mother reported he threatened her with a homemade bomb and other weapons. But no formal charges were filed in that case. This time, the FBI is helping local police with the investigation. Flags around Colorado were lowered to half-staff to honor those who died, and they will stay that way all week. A makeshift memorial is also growing near the club with flowers, candles, and a sign that says, Love Over Hate, next to a rainbow-colored heart. New Yorkers are now digging out from one of the biggest winter storms in recent state history. It dumped more than six feet of snow on the Buffalo area, which led to travel bans, road closures, and flight cancellations. The weight of the snow caused several roofs to collapse, and vehicles were stranded. Online, you can see footage of people trekking their way through waist-deep snow. Now, the worst of the snowstorm is over. But many schools are still closed today, since so much snow is still on the ground. The National Guard is helping with cleanup, along with road crews and private contractors. In some places, dump trucks are now removing snow to help clear the roads. Officials have told people to be careful as they clear their own driveways, since the snow is densely packed and there's ice under the surface. Thankfully, the area is now getting a bit of a break. No more snow is in the forecast, at least through Thanksgiving. A special counsel is now taking over two of the most significant Justice Department investigations of the past year. One, looking into whether former President Trump mishandled classified national security documents, and two, the events leading up to and through the January 6th Capitol riot. Attorney General Merrick Garland said he brought on special counsel Jack Smith once Trump decided to launch another campaign for president. The idea is to distance the Justice Department a bit from the most politically sensitive cases. But Smith has worked on this kind of thing before. He once led the DOJ's unit that investigates public corruption. Now he's going to be the third special counsel in five years to look into issues involving former President Trump. Trump responded on Truth Social, calling the announcement disgraceful, And at a Florida event over the weekend, he called it another witch hunt. Still, the attorney general says he will make sure the special counsel gets the resources to get the work done quickly. Some reports say the DOJ is hoping to get more information and bring witnesses into a federal grand jury within the next few weeks. To be continued. A woman who was once the youngest female self-made billionaire is now preparing for more than a decade in prison. The founder and former CEO of Theranos, Elizabeth Holmes, was sentenced to 11 years and three months in prison for fraud. Remember, Theranos claimed to have a test that could detect conditions like cancer and diabetes with just a few drops of blood. But it turns out the tests did not work. Holmes was found guilty of defrauding investors. The charges basically say she lied to investors, tricking them out of nearly a billion dollars. At last week's sentencing hearing, Holmes apologized, but again said she didn't know about the fraud. As she put it, quote, I loved Theranos. It was my life's work. Holmes has blamed the company's downfall on her ex-boyfriend and number two executive. He was also found guilty of fraud and is scheduled to be sentenced next month. For the first time, wealthy countries made a deal to pay reparations to poor countries for climate change. This is something developing nations have been pushing for for more than three decades, since they tend to suffer the worst effects of global warming, even though most greenhouse gases are released from rich countries. Well, diplomats from more than 200 nations, including the U.S., finally signed on at the end of the COP27 climate talks in Egypt. But a lot of the details still need to be hammered out. Representatives from 24 countries will work over the next year to figure out exactly what form the fund should take, which countries should contribute, and where the money should go. 
Separately, some smaller announcements came out of COP27, like 150 countries signed a pledge to reduce methane pollution. There's also a new plan to beef up weather forecasts and disaster warnings in places that don't have big national weather services. All right, we have much more news still coming up. But first, I'm excited to share a new sponsor with you because I was so impressed by my experience with them. It's called canvasprints.com. It lets you easily turn photo memories on your phone into these beautiful canvas prints or photo blankets and pillows, mugs, coasters, and more. So if you need a personalized gift this holiday season, you are going to love this. Although I recently got some canvas prints for our own home, and it was the easiest and most seamless process. I appreciated that canvasprints.com offered templated wall displays to choose from since I never really know exactly how everything should fit together on my own. But whether you do that or your own design, you literally just upload your photo, pick your product, and add to cart. Right now, canvasprints.com even has a special offer just for our listeners. Go to canvasprints.com and use the code NEWSWORTHY25 to get 25% off your entire order of canvas prints, canvas wall displays, metal prints, photo tiles, photo blankets and pillows, and much more. Find the perfect holiday gift for everyone on your list and save with this amazing offer. That's canvasprints.com and use the code NEWSWORTHY25 for 25% off your entire order. Today, President Biden is kicking off Thanksgiving week as presidents always do with the White House turkey pardon. That's the fun ceremony presidents have been holding for decades now where they let turkeys live out a good life instead of becoming food. This year, two turkeys from North Carolina were selected named Chocolate and Chip. They are staying in a fancy hotel room in Washington, D.C. Then after today's pardon, the turkeys will live out their days at North Carolina State University under the care of poultry specialists and students. But first, they'll have to get through today's White House tradition, full of the usual dad jokes. Or in President Biden's case, granddad jokes. The president turned 80 years old over the weekend, making him the first octogenarian to ever serve as president. He celebrated at his granddaughter's White House wedding, and the first lady brought him a cake at a special birthday brunch. Of course, Biden's age has a lot of people wondering whether it's time for him to finally retire or run for office again, since he would be 86 at the end of a potential second term. For now, Biden says he plans on running, but has not made an official announcement just yet. Former President Trump now has access to his Twitter account again. Remember, Trump was banned after the January 6th Capitol riot. But now the social media company's new owner, Elon Musk, asked Twitter users to decide whether or not to let Trump back on with a poll. Out of more than 15 million votes, 52 percent of people chose to restore the former president's account. But Trump may not come back. At last check, Trump has not tweeted, and he said before that he's sticking to the social media platform that he started himself called Truth Social. Meanwhile, Musk has also restored the accounts of other controversial figures like comedian Kathy Griffin and rapper Kanye West. A surprise sequel for Disney's ex-CEO. Bob Iger is back after less than a year in retirement. Disney unexpectedly announced last night that it had reappointed Iger as chief executive starting now and lasting at least the next two years. Iger spent nearly 50 years at Disney and 15 years in the top job before he retired. Now he'll take back over from Bob Chapek, who was named CEO in February of 2020 and came under fire for various decisions since. The board chair thanked him for his leadership during the unprecedented challenges of the pandemic and said Iger is now uniquely situated to lead the company through a time of industry transformation. The 2022 World Cup has officially kicked off. 32 teams representing countries across the globe are competing against each other, as they do every four years, in the most watched sporting event in the world. This time, it's taking place in the country of Qatar, the smallest country ever to host the Games, and the first Middle Eastern nation to host the event. The United States plays its first game today against Wales, starting at 2 p.m. Eastern time. These games are happening in the shadow of many scandals and controversies. For starters, several FIFA World Cup officials have been accused of taking bribes from Qatar, There are accusations players were offered bribes as well, which is under investigation. And it's worth mentioning, Qatar is a very religious country where women have fewer rights than men and where you can be arrested for being gay. Several teams and players are trying to highlight Qatar's history of human rights abuses. If you look closely, you may spot players on European teams like England, Wales, and the Netherlands wearing colorful heart-shaped armbands as part of an anti-discrimination campaign. Team USA is also displaying a rainbow crest for parts of the World Cup as a way to show support for the LGBTQ community, but the players will not be wearing them out on the field. In separate controversy, Qatar made the call to ban beer from being sold inside their soccer stadiums. 
It's a surprising move considering Budweiser is a major World Cup sponsor. And even fans who drink outside the venues are being told to take it easy since being drunk in public could get them jail time. In the face of the negativity, FIFA's president criticized Europe and others for trying to give moral lessons while ignoring their own troubles. If you just want to watch at home, Fox and FS1 will show matches all the way up until the final on December 18th. Comedian Wayne Brady hosted the American Music Awards last night on its 50th anniversary. The award for Best New Artist went to former Disney star Dove Cameron. Puerto Rican rapper Bad Bunny had the most nominations of anyone going into the big night. Out of his eight total nominations, Bunny managed to nab two awards. He lost several to the star who's making all the music headlines these days, Taylor Swift. Swift took home Artist of the Year along with five other awards. With that success, Swift now has more AMA wins than anyone else in history. That's it for the main news, so now it's time for Money Monday, when we talk about one interesting money-related news story. But first, a message from our sponsor. I've had to find more doctors lately, since I was pregnant, and then once I had my son, he needed a pediatrician, and when our insurance changed, my dentist was no longer in network, so I needed a new one. And let's be honest, it can be hard to find the right doctor for our own specific needs, personalities, and schedules. Oh, and of course, insurance. And yet, it's a really important decision. Well, I always at least check out ZocDoc as part of my research process. ZocDoc is a free app that shows you doctors who are patient-reviewed, take your insurance, and are available when you need them. Go to ZocDoc.com, check out doctors that could be right for you, and if it looks like a great fit, book an appointment in person or remotely that works for your schedule right on the app. Go to ZocDoc.com slash newsworthy and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then start your search for a top-rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash newsworthy. ZocDoc.com slash newsworthy. Now back to Money Monday. Well, you can expect your Thanksgiving meal this year to cost you more from turkeys to the rest of the fixings. The typical Thanksgiving Day meal is expected to cost about 20% more this year compared to last year, at least according to the American Farm Bureau and its annual survey. In 2021, the typical cost of a Thanksgiving meal big enough for 10 people was about $53. This year, it's jumped to $64, the most expensive it's ever been on average. Of course, inflation is at least one reason for the hike, but reports say a variety of issues with supply chains also contributed, as well as some shortages in parts of the Midwest because of avian bird flu in turkeys. If you're looking for what has increased the most, that would be stuffing mix. That's up a whopping 69% since last Thanksgiving, while cranberries were the only regular Thanksgiving item that's actually seeing a decrease this year, down 14%. All right, thank you so much for listening today and every day. We'll be back with much more news to know tomorrow. For now, have a great day.